Right, we've got enough people. We've got enough people. Hello, people. Right, okay. Are you ready? This is really, this is really damning, shocking stuff. It's appalling. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna press play. Okay. Let me know if you, if you've got any problems hearing it. Hello, all right, my name's John O'Dell, I know Brian mentioned it earlier. I did 25 years, I'm an ex-policeman, I was a detective in the Metropolitan Police. I dealt with, um, I specialised in child abuse investigations. Can you hear um, it all right? I um, dealt with a case of, uh, I was on the vice unit, specialist unit in the police. I dealt with a case of child violence. Can, can you hear it, people? I looked into it and it was quite apparent that it was quite endemic. You have one little girl. She was 13, she was being pimped out, and uh, she was being given heroin and crack cocaine. And she told me of another girl, who told me of another girl, another girl, and on it went. And it was an organised child prostitution racket, which was increasing by the day. Um, the kids went from nine years old right the way up to 14 year olds, and they were taken to some wealthy places, they were taken to some bottom end places. But what came out of it was that these kids were all known to, to the care system, to social services. They were all subject to care orders, every one of them. And uh, also that there was a judge involved. There was a senior cop involved. There was someone high up in the BBC involved. Uh, and it had been going on for well over a decade and probably into two decades. I uh, put together a very concise and factually based intelligence report submitted it and thinking that I would be promoted for what I disclosed or at least rewarded, the opposite occurred. At the same time, this is relevant, I was a single parent of four children. Um, I was brought into um, a senior officer's office. Uh, this senior officer is now one of the leading uh, police officers in the country. Leading police officer? And what, yes, what happened next uh, was just what was perverse. He turned around to me and he said, you know, um, what have you done? I said, well, what do you mean what have I done? He said, you know, what you've uh, found out can never get out. He said, you, if you mention a word or what you know outside of this room, you're going to F us, F-U-C-K us, past, present and future. And this cannot and shall not and will not ever get out. He said, if you mention a word of it, I will throw you to the walls. You will lose your job, you will lose your home, you will lose your children. You cannot say a word about this, you have no idea what you're dealing with, who you're dealing with, and how deep this goes. Now, um, these kids, their lives were at risk, they were living a very, very dangerous lifestyle, and in effect, children did die. The main key witness died, they shut the investigation down, and I was removed. I then went on to another unit, and within the matter of three days I found 50 children that were being prostituted out. Um, these kids were all known as social services and they were all, the, the system was making money out of them. I know someone explained it earlier. Share they were getting £2,000 per children per week for them being in care and there was no care at all involved. That again was shut down. I made an official allegation of police corruption post Jimmy Savile. Um, uh, revelations coming out uh, and then what happened was that the police came for me they've tried in the last three years to prosecute me on nine separate occasions uh, and each occasion could have got me a two year prison sentence um, on one occasion there was a colleague of mine who's terminally ill with cancer she was close friends right. with Bernard Hopenhow who was a commissioner at the time of the Metropolitan Police at a private party at his house, he was paying for her to have alternative treatment for her cancer. Uh, it was costing £10,000, it was coming out of some police slush fund. Um, and what had happened with me, the police had, had um, put me on, they, they revoked my pay, I was on no pay. Um, I was uh, looking at losing my home because I couldn't retain payments. They uh, said if I took up any work, they would uh, sack me. So my job was at risk. Um, a colleague of mine was so appalled as to what happened that she went up to Bernard Hovenhow during a Christmas party and said, Bernard, look, I need to talk to you about a colleague of mine. Um, he's been treated really bad and when you find out what, what it's all about, I think you'll agree with me. 
and he said, I can't listen. He said, his name is John Major. With that, he stood up, walked out, and then the next day withdrew all the funding for her cancer treatment and her cancer went into remission. Another colleague of mine went to my commander uh, earlier this year. Uh, one of my children suffered a uh, horrific injury in, in a terrible accident and was in intensive care and actually died twice whilst in intensive care. He's now permanently paralysed. I had no income. He was in a hospital 100 miles from my home. I was sleeping in my car because I couldn't afford to stay in a room to go and see him. A colleague of mine went to a commanding officer and said, you need to help John, this is what's happening. I was leaving at home, my other children, and one of my children was 16 years old. When my commanding officer heard that, they served discipline papers on my colleague, saying that they were withholding information, and then they sent two detectives round to my house and made an allegation being made by the Met Police to my home force that I was committing child abandonment and they tried to remove my youngest son from me. I teamed up um, two years ago with other whistleblowing coppers. One was Maggie Oliver. I don't know if anyone saw the BBC drama Three Girls. Maggie Oliver was the GMP, Great Manchester Police detective who exposed the Rochdale child grooming gang. They tried to prosecute her, GMP tried to put her in prison. The other one was Lenny Harper, who exposed the child abuse and murder in Hope de la Garenne in Jersey. And lastly was Mike Veal, the uh, brave Chief Constable Wiltshire, who exposed Ted Heath. Um, I went to see them all, and what they said is, John, this is what will happen to you. Not so much Mike Veal, but the other two. And they said, they'll come for you, they'll serve you with gross misconduct papers, they will charge you with offences, they will arrest you, they will try and imprison you. They will stop your money and they will attack everything and it's exactly oh, what they did. After three years of fighting the police, I finally won. Um, I'm now suing them. I'm now bringing together all the other whistleblowing coppers. <coughs> um, I'm only dealing We're with charges I'm not interested in anything else. Um, but what I'm saying is that there is uh, a conspiracy, a high level conspiracy involving sexual abuse of children and it goes right to the top. Lenny Harper, the commanding officer for Jersey, please at times said to me, John, what you will find is that the tentacles of what you're looking at will go right to the heart of the British establishment. At the time, the cabinet minister for policing and crime, Mike Penning, he asked the Home Office to assist me realising that there was a conspiracy against me. As soon as he did so, the Home Office insisted that they will help me, they will investigate my claims. The Home Office did to me what they did to Maggie Oliver. They invited me into Parliament, asked me to bring all my paperwork. They assured me they would investigate it. They seized my paperwork, promising me that there will be an independent government investigation. And then they buggered off and I never heard from him again. Done nothing. Mike Penning, the it. very, very next day, was removed from his post. Uh, there is something very, very dark going on. And if I would go back to the, what, what the lady said earlier. Yeah, listen. The girl who was going on about the straw man thing. I remember a case of four children that were taken into care. Um, three of them have been registered. The fourth one had not been registered. One wasn't and registered. I remember they had to give that child back. They gave it back. So even what the label was saying about it's the birth certificate, slaves are. It sort of verifies that. So um, that is my thing. I mean, I continue to sort of campaign. I was in the national press uh, at the weekends, and hopefully there'll be more to come. But um, you know, when you stand up, when you whistle blow, same as a victim and survivor of, of sexual abuse, you stand alone. No one will stand by you. I've spoken to people, whistleblowers from the NHS, from within the clergy, and so many people are bullied in the silence. So um, that's my angle, but uh, the truth is the truth, and uh, it will all stand out. But thank you ever so much for your support. Shocking. You shocked? Because I was shocked. It's appalling. That's come from someone who is really high up in the Metropolitan Police. Expo 
exposing the child abuse and he's been shut up and his life threatened, his family threatened. Enough's enough, people. Enough's enough. This is the sick shit that's going on behind the glossiness that's portrayed in our media and on the news. This is the real stuff that's happening. Real stuff that's happening. Gets me so angry. Just spoke to the woman I'm working with. Six more cases. Six more cases people have had fraudulent bankruptcies. They're stealing the kids. They're abusing the kids. They're stealing homes. They're stealing... It, this has got to stop. This shit's got to stop. Does that not make you angry? When you, you listen to that, those of you that... Some of you were joining a bit later. You're going to have to go back to the beginning of the replay. Is that not shocking? It's truly shocking. We haven't got a police. A police. The police are supposed to be protecting us and they ain't protecting us. What is the point of having the police? These people swore an oath to uphold the common law of this land and protect the people and protect the children and they're not. They're protecting corporations. They're protecting the MPs. They're protecting all them bastards in, in Parliament. But Theresa May... They're all as bad as one another. That whole thing's a cesspit. It's a cesspit. Go and listen, go and listen to the Hampstead Heath stuff. That tells you the sick shit these people are in and it's all being covered up. But what, what makes me feel positive in all this? Like I say, there's this energy. He's banning together with, it, with the good cops. There's another one, Dave Eden. David and Natalia, whistleblower, ex-copper, Metropolitan Police, is telling you how corrupt it is. We've got whistleblowers from the NHS. There's whistleblowers coming out everywhere. Now we've got to unite next year. And we've got to get behind that, that movement. The new Chartist movement is run by integrity people and they've got the backing. They've got the backing from the police. They've got the backing from people in army and they've got the backing from people who used to work in intelligence. Because all the people that are fed up and what's happening in this establishment and what's going on, they're fed up with it and they're getting together. We need to get behind this. Please share this video. I wasn't going to do it this morning. I wasn't. And then I just thought, fuck it. This stuff's got to be, this stuff's got to come out now. It's not about living in fear. All these parents are silenced from these secret